Hello and welcome back to Project Pro. I hope you all are doing well. So this is like our second lecture of Apache Airflow tutorial for beginners. So in the previous lecture, we have seen all about the basics of Apache Airflow and the introductory part, as well as we have set up and installed our Apache Airflow in your Windows machine. So this lecture is all about, we are going to discuss about some of the concept as well as the components of Apache Airflow. In this, we will see what is a DAG, which is a direct acyclic graph in Airflow, as well as see its UI and how a DAG looks like in the Apache Airflow. As well as we will see what are operators, as well as the task and how it is like the fundamental components of Apache Airflow. We will also see what are sensors and hooks, as well as the configurations of the executors and what really are the executors in detail. Also, we will see like the workflows and what are their dependencies and the connection as well as the variables in Apache Airflow. So without further any ado, let's start with the direct acyclic graph in Airflow. So the first one is a DAG. So direct acyclic graphs are like the mathematical structures which will represent your workflow as a collection of tasks which can be represented as a nodes as well as they are connected by the vertices which are known as the dependencies. So as you can see in this figure, there are different kinds of tasks which depends on one another. So as you can see, the task D depends on the B, C as well as the A. So once the task A, B and C completes, then the D goes to the E, which has the dependency with all A, C and D. But as you can see, the B and C are dependent on the task A. So once the task A completes, then only it will proceed to the next step, like the B and C. And then it will complete the D. And once the D completes, then only the E task will trigger. So this task is kind of having dependencies on the previous task. And you can see here, you have to ensure that this task should be executed in a specific order and it shouldn't have any circular dependencies or the loops. So as you can see, the task C depends on task A, but it does, but task A does not depends on task C. So if it is the case, then this is really a circular dependencies or we can simply say it as a loop dependency. So once you establish any DAG in Airflow, it will throw an error. It will not accept it as a DAG. In DAG, you will only have the executions in the specific order. So we are going to embark on a journey for constructing a complex direct acyclic graph, which can mirror a real world use case. So you will be witnessing like the intricate web of dependencies among the task, as well as you will understand deeply how the DAX will provide a clear structured as well as the view of workflow logic. So, the DAG will offer tremendous flexibility. So they can model a wide range of the workflows. So it can go from the simpler one to the complex one, which has the branching processes. So this flexibility will allow every organization for tackling variety of data challenges from the ETL. So ETL means extract transform load. I hope you already aware of that. And it can also help us in the processes of machine learning pipelines. So this is why DAG is so much important concept in the airflow. Let's take on to the UI and let's see how a workflow looks like and their different views. Okay, so I hope you successfully installed Apache Airflow and set up a Docker desktop on your Windows machine. You just have to kick off your Docker engine as well as the compose file and we can just go ahead to the localhost 8080 and login through our admin password which we have created in the previous lecture. So you have to just sign in to this. And after signing this, all you have to do is these are like all the director cyclic graphs. If you click on DAX, as you can see, these are already provided by the airflow. So as you can see the owner, you can see it as an airflow. So these are like the sample DAGs, which are provided by the airflow itself. So as you can see, all these are in the post condition. So once you deployed any DAG into Airflow and if you make any errors in that and if you want to pause it, you can directly pause it from here itself. As well as, as you can see, this is the unique identifier of your DAG, which is like the name. 
so in this case for the first one it is data set underscore consumes underscore one this is like a unique identifier name for this direct acyclic graph also it has like these two labels attached so labels or we can say it as a tags will help us group all the tags together so you can group it to make this more organized so if you have like bigger organization having the multiple pipelines and if you want to group certain pipelines you can keep it in a single label or you can say a tag so this has two tags which consumes and the data set scheduled so also as you can see the owner i don't see this a very important field in this ui so we will not talk about it so as you can see we got the runs column here in which you got the two successful runs as well as in the running and the fail there are none as you can see this is last run on this 16 9 23 and the timestamp is there and the next run is like you can see this zero of one data set is updated and also in the recent task you can see like what are in the none state what are removed you can see it as what are scheduled queued the successful ones the running ones and all this you can also see like what are shut down restart failed and up for it right there are so many options are available in this recent task option so as you can see you can see it as all the DAGs which are active so here as you can see there are not active DAGs here and all the DAGs are in paused position I haven't scheduled it yet so this is like the home page of a direct acyclic graph let's get into one and see what all the details we will be seeing in the airflow UI so once you go into this this is like the grid view so in grid view you can see all the successful ones executions as well as the failed ones and analyze it what is the root cause so as you can see we got like this successful run which has triggered manually by me itself and we got another successful one so as you can see if you click on the first one you can just mark it as failed or mark as success by seeing the logs and you can just clear the existing task or queue up the new task from here itself so as you can see you got the run id the status of the job and the run type which was manual and you can see the run duration as well so it took like seven seconds to complete the workflow as well as the last scheduling decision was there and you can directly see all the information related to this tag then you can then you can see like the next one and the next one completed in merely six seconds so as you can see we got the start time the end time the data interval start and the end time of this executions so similarly you can just search for any of the date you can apply the filters over here you can see all the runs the run times as well as the run state so you can see all the queued running failed and you can do all sorts of filtering over here so once you have like a bigger and more DAX then you can easily manage this using the grid workflow okay so this was all about the grid view but let's talk about the graph view now so in the graph view as you can see we got this stack and all sorts of operations over here so these are the tasks which are dependent on one another so as you can see here we got the three tasks and the run after loop task is dependent on this run zero one and two tasks and once these three are succeeded then only it will go to the run after loop and also like this run this last at the last task so this last task is dependent on the three tasks so using this graph you you will get to understand which tasks are dependent on which which are failed or succeeded what which task is stopping the another one and all these tasks so from this color coding you can easily identify the issues in your direct acyclic graphs so our next view is the landing times this is like one of the most important view in the direct acyclic graph so as you can see it is not giving that much information over here so once you trigger this or set it up schedule this DAG and you have like multiple instances of this DAG so then you will see this landing time of each execution so let's say if you have like the execution time is increasing then you will be able to see this analytics in this landing times view and it will really help us to optimize that task so that the execution time will be reduced so for that landing times is also a very helpful view for the airflow 
okay so the next components are operators as well as the task so operators are just like the tools in your data workflow toolbox so each is designed for a specific task so as you can see in this figure each task has their operators which is inside the direct acyclic graph so you will encounter like variety of operators type this could be like a python operator this could be bash operator and each have its unique strength so in the deep dive we are going to see all these operators and how to create them and which one will be the best for your use case that also we are going to see in the upcoming lectures so operators will empower us to perform a wide array of task in our workflows so python operators for instance will enable us to run python functions as a task so if you know python a little bit you can use python operators easily in your workflow and it will make it like a very versatile choice for data processing the modeling or training the custom operations bash operators are like ideal for running shell command so if you are good in shell scripting so it will open up vast possibilities for you for interacting with external system or the scripts so it is totally depend on which one you are more comfortable with each has its unique strength also so that we are going to see in detail in the upcoming videos but both python operators and the bash operators gives us like the versatile options of creating the operators for your tasks okay so the next components are sensors and hooks so sensors are like your workflows watch dogs so they will allow our task for waiting patiently until the specific conditions are met which will ensures that our workflows will progress when it is appropriate so you can just put various conditions on top of your workflow so those conditions are satisfied then only your workflow will get executed and after that the next one which is dependent upon this one will get executed so this is like to ensure your accuracy of your workflow then we got the hooks so hooks will provide you like the versatility by allowing our workflows to connect with various external system so as you can see our hook is connected to our system or any api and then it is like connected to the operator as you can see in this figure so if you talk about the sensors so sensors in the real world scenarios you can just employ the http sensors to wait for external api to return to a specific response before continuing to the downstream task and the hooks like provides the versatility by allowing the airflow to connect to the various external system as we already talked about so whether it will be a database or it will be a cloud service the messaging platform so hooks will facilitates all this very seamlessly the interaction between that external service and the airflow which expands the airflow's horizon because integration with the external services will give us the capability to adapt airflow in many of the use cases because let's say your company has different requirements other companies or organizations will have their different infrastructure and their components so airflow has to fit in by integrating it using this hooks so hooks will provide you the, all the versatility and in the upcoming lectures that we are going to see as well like how we can create hook and how you can communicate and integrate with external sources like we have seen just now so the next one is executors and the executor configuration so airflow will offer different executor types which one like be specific to certain use cases and we will dive into the executor configuration which will guide you to performance optimization scalability as well as the resource allocation let's talk about the performance optimization as well as the scalability now so in this tutorials we are going to explore like the scaling strategies that will accommodate the growth of your data and it will learn to leverage like the parallelism the multiple workers as well as the dynamic resource allocation to meet this evolving demands because as your data grows your pipelines may suffer and the performance will be degraded and to scale it up you will be leveraging the parallelism as well as the multi node cluster in your setup and if you talk about scalability scalability is also a very important aspect of every data engineering pipeline so it is like at the heart of airflow's design 
so as the data volume increases and the processing requirement also increases our airflow setup can scale up horizontally by adding the more worker nodes and this capability will ensure us like to remain efficient as well as even in the face of growing data workloads so that is like the biggest advantage of using airflow by any other scheduler or orchestration tool also then we have like the workflows as well as the dependencies so workflows and the dependencies are like the visible threads that will weave your task into the cohesive data story let's talk about this in detail so in this we are going to master the art of defining the complex task dependencies within our dags which are like data type cyclic graph as you already know and we are going to explore some of the advanced techniques for handling intricate workflows including like the dynamic task generation as well as the error handling that will go into like the fifth lecture which is the final lecture as well as if we talk about the dynamic workflow handling where like the tasks are created on the fly based on the changing conditions and it will ensure your data pipelines to be a very adaptive as well as the responsive and if you talk about the workflow agility this agile workflows are like the key to modern data processing so every industry is following the agile framework only and with the airflow you can just create workflows on the go which will adapt to changing data sources like for example as well as changing all the dependencies and the business rules so this agility will empower organizations for staying competitive and in today's fast paced world and the growing data it is a very important thing to do so the last components are connections and the variables so connection will store like the sensitive information like the database credential and the variables will centralize this configuration setting so we are going to guide you in this tutorial how to create them securely as well as ensuring your workflows will remain robust so with this airflows connection and variable management you can achieve like a higher level of the data security as well as while ensuring your workflows will run smoothly without affecting anything so you have to witness like the importance of this secure data handling as we will demonstrate how to encrypt as well as manage the sensitive information within your airflow setup because like data security is a paramount and organizations must secure the sensitive information and maintain the regulatory compliance so with this airflows connection and variable management we are able to achieve all of that so this was all about the basic components and features of the apache airflow okay so this was all about today's lecture here we have seen all the components as well as the concept of apache airflow in detail as well as seen like the introductory part of the airflow ui the next lecture will going to get released on 25th of september so stay tuned because in the next lecture we are going to get our hands dirty and build our own workflows with the apache airflow so this is going to be very fun so stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to the channel thanks for watching